All right, guys, Luke just broke down basically how to break it down from the, when you're on the field. One piece right. into five or six, right? Yeah. Yeah, so kind of the packed out breakdown, if you will. Um, we're going to go into deboning now. So where do you want to start, hind quarter, shoulder? Let's start with the... Uh, Let's start with the shoulder. Okay, you're gonna give me the tricky one first, yeah. huh? Ah. <laughs> All what right. What I wanna right. learn most about first. <laughs> the best way to break down your shoulders are gonna be from the outside or the front of the shoulder, if you will. Um, you're gonna have one primary bone that sticks out here. We can kind of see it just a little bit. Um, I think the best thing to do is just make one little cut all the way down each side of it. Um, from there, your shoulder's gonna open up a lot easier and just give you a good place to start here. So we can kind of open it up with our finger here, keep diving in with our knives. And this is gonna be cutting right off the scapula here. And we can do a pretty slick work of this if we just go slow and take our time. Um, this is gonna be your blade. So you can do a lot of fun things with blade. And I hate to see these go in the grinder. And they make an awesome roast. You can cut a flat iron steak out of it if you're getting real, real fancy and overzealous. And, but you see how it's just coming off in one nice big piece there. We're working all the way down to the bone. Nice. And we're just gonna keep following that scapula all the way around. And I think with shoulders, lots of guys will just kind of hack at it. Um, until all the meat's off, you know. Um, but the larger the chunks of meat you can take home, the more options you're gonna have down the road, uh, what you wanna do um, with those kind of primals, if you will. <clears throat> Keep working our way around here. So yeah, that is just about all the blade we're gonna get off. And I'm gonna work into Kind of the shoulder bone right here and just keep following the line between the bone and the meat there and it will all come off in one nice big piece there and um, typically when we're breaking down animals at the shop and we'll show this a little later in the video we'll be breaking these pieces with a saw a big big kind of meat table saw if you will um, but back in the elk woods, you usually don't pack in one of those too far. So <laughs> we're just gonna work all the way back here. And really start opening up this shoulder. Um, I find it easier to take off and separate these pieces here. Um, a lot of this will end up in trimmings. Um, I mean, you can do a Osabuco shank or some sort of shank roast with it. Um, but I think for this client, this elk and this shoulder, that's gonna end up kind of in the grind pile there. So we'll debone that in a few minutes and get after it. Um, I'm just gonna come over to the other side, the back side of the scapula here, and just keep working really close to that bone, as close as I can get. Now, Luke. Yes, sir. You said a lot of times this meat off the scapula turns up into the grind. Correct. What should we be doing with it? Well, I'll show you here. Once we get all this meat off, we're gonna have a couple main cuts we can work with. So off this side, this is a good visual here. We pulled that blade roast off, and I'll show this to you guys in a minute. And um, this side of that bone will be the mock tender. Both awesome roasts, um, or we can cut them thin into steak. So, um, let me debone this real quick here. Oh yeah, pretty clean scapula, so it's going to go in the junk pile. So as we lay this out, we can see really, I mean, two big primary muscle groups, right? We have the big blade here, it has a real unique shape. Um, you know, kind of a, a trapezoid almost. And then we have the mock tender over here. So we're gonna separate that mock tender. 
And we can do really whatever we want with this. I'm going to take off this cap here. Throw it in the trim ends. This is a pretty slick piece of meat, I think is often overlooked. Um, we're going to trim it up just a hair here. Right, this is the outside shell we're going to take off real quick. Just sliding that knife tip right underneath and working it forward. So you can do this in as big or as little strips as you want, but this is a great way just to real thin trim up your meat. Now, if you want to leave some of that silver skin on, most of this is that shell and that usually doesn't cook very well, but kind of more some of the silvery stuff we see in here like this. If you cook it as a roast and leave that on there, um, and if you cook it long enough and with enough moisture, um, that'll turn into some real nice, like silky smooth kind of roast material. And if you guys are familiar with that, if you've eaten a good home cooked roast before. Um, so booyah, that's a pretty well trimmed up blade right there. I'm gonna take off just a little more here. Um, and you can really trim until your eyes fall out, but right, we have some nice red meat there, no shell, very limited silver skin on there. And we can leave that as a whole roast, or if we're getting really zealous, cut it as steaks. So a good rule of thumb is your bony knife, you know, it's kind of your average five or six inch bony knife. This, the base of it is usually right about an inch thick. And I think when we take a look at um, why do folks um, bring their game to processors? And my hope is to bring consistency um, to our customers, right? If we have our steaks cut all sorts of different thicknesses, um, that gets hard to cook. It gets kind of tricky um, to make sure everything's cooked at the right temperature. You know, if you're setting on some steaks for the grill for your buddies um, and everyone wants medium rare, that's a lot of grill management. You know, if all your steaks are several different sizes here. So typically what you buy at the supermarket is gonna be three quarters to an inch thick right in there. Um, it really doesn't matter how thick it is. I think the biggest thing is consistency. Um, so, and when you're cutting steaks, if you can do one nice fluid motion or maybe just barely two, um, that is gonna treat you a lot better when it comes to consistency and thickness. So we got some good little medallions there. And I think that'll treat this customer quite nice. So. Leave it in one whole piece, leave it as a roast, or break it down into nice little medallions there. Now, so I'm gonna separate our blade from the rest of the shoulder here. take a look at this blade here you can see from this shell this outside piece is, is on the outside of the shoulder and this is the inside of the shoulder here and again very similar with the mock tenderloin we're just going to trim this up a hair um, and we can either use it as a roast or like a thin uh, almost like a fajita kind of style steak um, pretty slick um, Nice, so we have one piece of sinew that runs down the middle of this entire piece of meat here. Typically with your steaks, what you're gonna do is cut them across the grain. So we can see the grain of the meat going this way. Um, a steak is typically cut perpendicular to that grain. So if you wanna leave it as a roast, just take a little bit of trim off and leave it right like that. Cutting steaks, cutting across the grain, but with this blade, it's real fun. We have this one piece of silver skin right in the middle here. We're just gonna see if we can use our hands on this one. I'm gonna have to use the knife a little bit. We're cutting what's called a flat iron steak. <laughs> we don't cut a lot of these around here, so I'm gonna go slow on this one. But essentially, if you just use your knife and cut and scrape right along that piece of sinew, it'll come off in one nice piece 
a flat iron steak. So, you know, you go up to Boulder and pay 50 bucks for a flat iron steak. That's essentially what this is, just cut off a beef. Um, so real thin like that. And, you know, we could dice this up into, you know, a little fajita meat um, or whatever we want. So we've got two flat iron steaks right there just ready for the grill.